hey uh, how many I saw a couple of submissions happening even till early morning today and uh, what uh, some of them have not uploaded yet probably and they are on vacation which will come on later. But uh, I saw a couple of them having made a big difference between what they had presented earlier and what they have uploaded now. So there is certain amount of change I can see. Probably let us just uh, go to one of the examples. Yeah, this is uh, the group uh, Love and Hate. Is anybody from that group present now? Yeah, good. I did not want to talk when nobody is here, but anyway, since you are here, <coughs> anyway, I, go, I was going to talk good about you guys because uh, this was the earlier slide what you had uh, given out. And uh, we had heard comments on this, right? And this is what you are given now. The same slide actually, I wanted to just compare the recent slide. And, and uh, what is uh, what is distinctly different in these two slides? So, what is what's distinctly different in these two slides? So, apart from the group people because they have done it, anybody else has comments on this? Bullets, mic is not on. Just a minute, my audio communication is lar louder, so I need to put the mic below. Okay. Huh. Yes, so paragraph to bullets is one change. Anything else? They have changed by the using by using colors, huh? By using uh, colors. colors, right? Colors. Right. So they have tried to highlight the keywords by using colors. At times they have used color and italic, but that's okay. It's not disturbing your eyes. So till then it's fine. And uh, they have also uh, tried to chunk it into the equal proportion. So they one bullet is not too big than other. So, you can see even distribution of content which is eye pleasing mostly. They added some template graphic to it and uh, I do not know I, I, I am not able to relate to love and hate and it will not be uh, nobody will be able to relate to it any which way like you, you did not think much about whether it, it matches love and hate. But um, I am coming to that point actually what graphic for uh, or what uh, strategy design strategy for what topic. So, anyway I am I will come on that, but overall you can see a big difference between the two slides right. And uh, that is why I thought of choosing this as a example case uh, to start off. And uh, there are many more, but uh, unfortunately since the submission time was uh, way beyond my time of looking at it. So, uh, last I think I checked in at around 2 o'clock and there were a couple of them which were uploaded after that. So, I gave up after that and uh, in the morning I just downloaded some of them and it, I was trying to see the similarities between the <coughs> uh, samples I had shown last time and the samples which are now uploaded. Okay, your views on that, what, what else, what did you do to get up to this point now and are you happy with this output? You are happy, okay. And what were what was the thinking process? Why did you change from this point to that point? <laughs> there were some comments anyway, but uh, like, what was your methodology? Okay. Okay. But there is another uh, comment I have. So if you have. Uh, this kind of uh, the the one which I liked very much was that you start with a problem somewhere in the slide and end up with a bold question which will lead to the next slide. 
So, I think that strategy was used beautifully by these people. I do not know because this is a PDF right now, but uh, whenever you present suppose it is bullet by bullet appearing, then probably people will have the suspense that how can hate be related to love is the suspense point you want to bring at the end of the slide which will appear and it will not be projected in the first go. So, people will <coughs> keep on guessing <coughs> about you talk about love, you talk about hatred and then you talk about scientific. In fact, the next slide is also very interesting in this presentation. Uh, uh, not next one, I think. Uh, ah, so, for people having poor biology, I think they have helped them a lot by, by actually showcasing the graphic, <laughs> where is what <laughs> kind of thing. But yeah, uh, this, this makes a lot of difference. Like suddenly, I know <laughs> know what is lying where and how are you going to relate to it. So, then subsequent slides actually explain the details of this, but uh, this is very interesting sentence. This is where hate resides. So, you know if you have to uh, eliminate hate, then what you have to do. <coughs> okay, um, I just wanted to start off with uh, these examples, since I thought there was a lot of uh, work being put up. <coughs> I had couple of more, but let us just get into uh, the main talk because I am not expecting more than you guys to come today since it is a long weekend ahead of today's class. <coughs> so, in the impress part we saw color schemes and typography and we stopped at a point where we were supposed to discuss visual effects and uh, something called appeal. So, what <coughs> today we will just touch base upon visual effects because even after the class there were queries about visual effects, how, why and when. So, this is an important topic and I thought <coughs> we will use that. Ah, so, uh, there are, uh, this is a very common feature asked by a lot of people. Should we animate characters and should we, should we show that in a, in a way that uh, people find it very interesting. And this dropping letters and flying letters are a very common, commonly used uh, thing. The second important thing which is used is having transition between the slides. So, what we are talking is transitions within the slides plus transitions between the slides and both have their own advantages and disadvantages. I am coming to that now. But when you talk about slide with transitions or the uh, co content with transitions, there are a lot of ways you can show that there are door openings and, and there are some blasts and there are something like uh, very popular page curls or the v Venetian blinds. There are uh, now 3D ones have come with the cube rotating and so what actually uh, you can see is the range is too much. You can you can go on and on. You change the tool, you get newer effects, and there is a talk like oh, this may effect dekha kya and all that. And there is there is huge thing happening. What happens is that after you see all that, you just get mesmerized by the range available there, and it is uh, it's important that you should think about where was the topic, like what is the presentation going on here. Uh, I am sure most of you must have forgotten by now what was my first bullet in the outline slide which I which was the first slide, right. Because uh, all these things <laughs> took you away from the main content which was about uh, visual effects and uh, which was about the out, yeah, thanks. <coughs> So, let us let us go back a bit and see what is uh, what was the what was the whole thing about why did we start talking about visual effects and the reason is <coughs> we if you remember four sessions back we started with this sentence everybody loves stories and this uh, sentence has this important love of uh, important word of loves and the storytelling part is what is now we are coming to once we have now finalized stories so everybody Everybody wants stories, but how will you make them love that story? And that is where these visual effects can make or break the situation. And uh, <coughs> a popular uh, convention is uh, this very famous debate about form or function. So, what comes first or what should be more prominent, whether form is important or the function is important. So, my take on that is both are important, especially in visual communication part, because any one is not adequate enough to suffice for other. So, if it is inadequate, then you will have uh, ineffective communication. So, 
and on the other side if you have extra attention to that then it will lead to chaos but if you have everything in more proportions than required obviously it will have a chaotic scene so what i follow is that content and into bracket i have put in that for the given audience should definitely help you to choose all these things in the order of what i have written in and that's why uh, apart from the plan part which we discussed because that has a big overlap on the content thing but after you have freezed on what you have to show then you should be able to choose a good visual for the content what you have selected you should also create a appropriate design for that what we were talking about fonts and colors and all that and a suitable strategy of presentation so whether you use a spin wheel or a cube rotating or something like that or you have a video in between and then you just show whether you have a blank slide and just keep talking to people by the way how many people attended uh, professor fatak's talk last time all of you right uh, which tool did you use for his presentation powerpoint or what i i didn't attend he wrote right he wrote by hand there was no powerpoint there was no keynote there was no prezi there was nothing right but uh, how many people liked the talk by the way right how many people liked it because he used it hand written uh, uh, can you can you appreciate the same talk if it is given by samir using a powerpoint of the same content yes or no maybe no right <laughs> be blunt i am not offended <laughs> so doesn't matter so it it matters the most that he was catering to the audience he was talking to so he knew what you guys want to hear and the way you want to hear it and that suspense value of what is he going to write next was all the thing which was holding you here and making coming all years to listen to him so that that was his strategy so that's what the point was the suitable strategy for the given content and the given audience is will we will which will make that thing different right probably you will not enjoy the same talk even if it is videographed at times because you have that positioning of like you can forward and all that because that kills us yeah <laughs> so uh, <coughs> so the point here is <coughs> when when you have such a situation and we are now talking in the context of what you people have been doing as a part of your assignments so this is where i actually uh, this is what i suggest as a option and you can <coughs> differ on that but there are many ways of doing it so there is no one correct answer to the whole problem so the the thing which i follow is to go in this way to come to a strategy and then present it <coughs> so what we'll do now is uh, okay so here is a comparison of top 5 presentation tools that uh, has been done by a website called uh, life hacker or something where they had uh, taken a poll of some 13000 plus users asked them what is the best presentation tool according to you uh, and these are the votes now prezi got uh, something 1700 votes as compared to powerpoint which was it only got 6000 but anyway that was the next best and uh, for people who are you aware of prezi how many people are aware of prezi 1 2 3 4 5 and a half okay fine but uh, prezi is a is a tool which uh, okay i'll try to showcase that by the way just a quick recap what is the mistake or the what is wrong thing about this slide too small no go ahead the balance is odd no. there should be a pie chart you can't you have to really go through it to understand which is bigger and which is smaller okay okay uh, so prezi is how many percent to the total thing is not understood because it is presented in a horizontal bar chart okay maybe one thing anybody font else ha huh? font is too small font is too small okay one of the ha huh? not arranged in a uh, in a hierarchical manner so low to high or high to low right okay i have pasted a screenshot yeah so which is not blending 
screenshot is not blending with my style of template ok anything else we from the same point actually ha huh? ok right right but like the part of that answer was given to her because I copy pasted from a website. So, I did not have control over the way they presented the content. So, which means that I have to do two things either I have to give credit to the people who have done it which is not done if you remember last time we, we discussed this point or I have to recreate it in the way my audience will understand it right because this was an article in some website which people will anyway go and see because that was maybe probably sponsored by Prezi I do not know about it but, uh, but they just wanted that red line of Prezi to look uh, prominently bold enough. Also there is one problem which I remember talking to you earlier on which is called about uh, the spacing between two elements decides which is which are together right. So, if you see everything is equidistant from each other. So, when you see that red dot in between Beamer and PowerPoint it is very difficult to first of all start for people who do not know Keynote is a presentation tool they will not start reading from there probably they will start from Beamer and then they will get confused about what is which is related to what. So, uh, so these kind of mistakes anyway I just diverted a bit but uh, why I wanted to show that was a <coughs> case study which I want to bring out now it is my own work. So, I just thought of sharing that to avoid all copyright issues that I discuss my own case studies. The case study is about a paper which we had written uh, about a game that game was supposed to teach students mathematics skills. So, after we created that game and we created some usability test about how children like it and all we thought that we had a content for a paper at a X conference. Now, that was a computer science conference and uh, we wanted to present it there. When it came to presentation per se from the paper onwards then we were deciding on the strategy. Visuals yes we had visuals because the game was built up we had visuals we had a screen capture of the video demo of the uh, game itself and we, we could show that. But we had to have a presentation. So, how will we show that uh, which, which had to show the entire process of how the game was developed and uh, so this was uh, this was one of the tools what we used I should have opened it earlier hey uh, for people who know Prezi in meantime can, can uh, who said they know Prezi right somebody put their hand up right ah, ok. So, you have to volunteer till I just open that thing on Prezi can you just tell the class what is Prezi like in in 4 or 5 lines. <laughs> yeah come here. So, Prezi is a tool that is used to make presentations. It is hosted in this, this site Prezi.com in which uh, it provides an online interface to make presentations like what we have in Google like it is almost like Google Docs it is available as an online service at the same time you can download the offline version also and the best thing about Prezi is the animations uh, there are many templates uh, which you can use for example uh, there is something called the road map in which you can make slides and the slides will be like a road map and the animations is quite animations are quite good apart from it Prezi in Prezi you can you, you can just concentrate on the contents the other visual effects will be taken care of by the Prezi itself. Uh, by the way you have to go on till I get the network here <laughs> because I am not getting network. <laughs> yeah. 
anyway no uh, jokes apart but yeah what he said was right i am uh, still trying to pull out that uh, phrase which uh, thanks um phrase uh, like he said is a online version and this is one of the problem which can be there if you use phrase but you land up into a conference room where you struggle with the network and all your presentation is online somewhere because you have made last minute change from the hostel room or somewhere and then you want to pull out that online version and you don't have anything where the offline version is the older one probably and then you don't have a uh, control on that so uh, that happens and i am experiencing it that right now but uh, let me just pull it out in the meantime <coughs> i'll show you the other version which was created for this so i started with a standard powerpoint tool also apart from uh, this high tech uh, prezi tool but uh, that was okay so this this is a uh, yeah so this was uh, created in a presentation tool called keynote which is for apple but uh, it's similar to powerpoint almost all features copy there and uh, as you can see the template is standard blackboard or a green board template with uh, what type uh, something like chalk chalk or some font like that which which resembles to handwriting script font is used <coughs> but it's not that fancy that it's unbearable for reading uh, okay and uh, like i said there were already visuals with me which had uh, the screen captures of the uh, the game which was uh, being presented there i also had a video of that and uh, some things which were uh, could be put up into tables i had put it up like that processes had arrows and mapping with the objectives to the applications or tools used or some charts which were showing the flow of the whole thing so additional features which were not readable like this one here had a pop up like this which would show you the text because it was not readable at that size and so on and so forth for example yeah feedback was put up into call outs so that people relate to it as somebody spoke and also in quotes so to say that it was about it yeah and uh, let me see if i can still get the offline prezi yeah it says math amazing will this swf work by the way it's a offline version a bit old but yeah probably it should work oops trouble with your prezi what is to be done in these cases any ideas yeah download yes but only after you get to the net right i'm not getting to the net. <laughs> okay but i had a offline version saved on the computer which i'm trying to open and it shows oops you had a problem with prezi ah uh, okay i have this folder called uh, should be outside this yeah this one mathamazing.html yeah i had downloaded before i ah pardon yeah i'm not able to connect to the network just a minute i'll just uh, check it again what i'm not getting is i'm not getting the router and they don't have a wire here so anyway
Yeah, so this case study, I had the option one which had a template from Prezi. Uh, probably I'll have the uh, probably I'll have the PDF of this made from the. Yeah, I had this. Okay, fine. I can I can still work on that. Yeah. So, Prezi is a tool which, uh, like he said, apart from the 3D effects and all, it gives you a big playground to use, where you can put in your uh, elements of your slides and all, and then organize in such a way that you can you can actually move from one uh, element to other using some animations of motion and all. So the version I am now showing is a PDF version which will be, which will not be having the motion and all that. But the reason I am showing was that uh, when I said that there was a template from Prezi which was very tempting to use. Because you, can you make out the reason why it was tempting? Because I was talking about game and uh, it had a very uh, old game look, uh, pixelated game look which was uh, like in the days of Pac-Man kind of thing. So. So I was trying to use this uh, this template and also use a similar font which will which will look like uh, mono space or those type of fonts, very digital looking fonts for the problems and for solutions I was using a, a slightly different font. So I was trying to <coughs> compare that with each other that what is the obstacle and what is the solution. So I was trying to constantly move between the obstacle and solution. Uh, keyframes. <coughs> yeah, this kind of graphics were available there. And uh, yeah, so this I was talking to somebody later on about the circle used in Prezi. I don't know whether he is here today. <coughs> so the choice was between uh, this kind of a tempting presentation available at Prezi and a rather normal template available in Keynote. Keynote, as I said, is a presentation tool for Mac you could not see it yourself and the verdict was obviously what what should have been used by the way now that's the open question so you saw two templates right the content is the same the audience is uh, cs conference so what type of template should i use for these two comments which one prezi or non prezi For the gaming, gaming uh, topic, so the Prezi looks okay. Okay, how many people agree with Prezi as a tool? No. How many people for the chalkboard? And what about the rest? Anyway, <laughs> something else is required, right? Maybe. Okay, so this was my conclusion. So that simple chalkboard one is is good enough for the CS conference. And uh, the animated crazy is wherever I present it at a game developers conference, probably because the audience will be able to relate to it very easily as compared to the audience which I am talking to. And <coughs> why do I say that? Because uh, when, I, when I start about uh, showing these two different versions, then why do I say that one is good for this and other is not, for good, not good for this? That's the difference between what we want to do from communication and what should be the function of that. And this is a definition I am using from one of the uh, papers which is uh, given at the end. So it's about uh, communication refers to the design's ability to put forth a message. Now the message is clear in your mind what you want to say and communication is only that. But the functionality is beyond that when you want to when you are knowing that who is going to attend and what are they going to do with it at that time you you start browsing through all the options so the, my suggestion is you can go through all the options possible whatever you have keep a library in your mind but when you have to choose that time let the the content decide or help you decide the choice because the, the range is too much so it's very difficult to say that uh, X is the only best option. So there can be multiple best options. So just to recap what we have been doing for last uh, four or more classes, 
was to start from the plan point, we execute for the plan what we have decided and then finally we use impress to uh, finally deliver the lecture and before that one important thing which is written in all caps at the last line here is that practice part and there is no shortcut to that because however good you have that presentation and uh, uh, experience what I had with uh, Professor Fatak. So, he was telling me that when he got an appointment at, as a faculty member at IIT Bombay from the first uh, TA uh, scholarship whatever he got, he bought a tape recorder and uh, he used to record his own lecture for the next day on that tape recorder by doing all the mimic actions whatever he wanted to use that in front of a mirror and then listen to it after like the kids will go to sleep and all that because they thought he was getting crazy by doing all these things and they were not understanding a word out of it. He was giving all the computer science lectures that time. But he said that practice was the only saving grace and that's where I can now, uh, I can go out and talk and people come back and say that wow your lecture was good. So that has not come overnight and it has been practiced since then and he still practices that whole thing because whenever I see him, he will create a presentation, give it to uh, somebody to read, get comments, get it corrected. For every comma, every dot, he will, he will not spare himself. In fact, I was with him on Saturday and he had to give a lecture in Mumbai University. He came back from that lecture and he was talking to uh, Prakash Vaidya sir. And he said, I found three mistakes in my own lecture, even after we had checked so many times. And then he showed that printout that these were the three mistakes I found out. And uh, Prakash Vaidya gave him the same paper which had some 18 corrections there. So, <laughs> said uh, after we relook at it, we find our own mistakes. And it takes real big heart to admit that we had so many mistakes in that. And also to change those and overcome those and decide on your own that you will not commit those mistakes again and again. So, that's, that's something worth uh, taking back as a uh, as an important advice. So, I suggest that uh, whatever presentations you guys have done are definitely and you can see the transitions now. I showed you one example, there are a couple of more examples like that. So I think let us now uh, decide on the plan for how to record the presentations so that uh, we can do this. So we have a classroom in uh, Crescent third floor called lecture hall which is just behind uh, seminar hall. So, on the third floor there are two halls, semicircular halls with a well like structure. So, uh, you have to, uh, so how are we going to do that? We have slots from next week onwards. Can you just give the details of that? Okay, so the plan is that uh, in the uh, lecture hall, we will schedule um, five presentations in each class. So that means on the Tuesday class, there will be five, Thursday and for the next two weeks, we will cover all uh, 17 or 18 um, uh, groups or teams. Um, we will record everything and we plan to upload it. We would like to have an interesting audience. Right, and I feel that the right level to pitch at is about uh, tenth or eleven standard kids. Someone who is intelligent, who might not be a matter expert, right? That that uh, puts more uh, demands on your presentation skills, and uh, um, the class will review each of the performances, right? And uh, we'll decide what to do next after that. So, if there are any special requirements that you have on that day, uh, uh, do let us know. Um, we will figure out now how to do it. I was thinking that we put a chroma screen, a green screen behind and then afterwards do branding on it and put some scenery or whatever it is and stuff like that. But uh, we will uh, figure out what is uh, possible um, in that classroom. Any questions? So, what we are hoping is that there are six members to a team, right? Each person will speak for at least a minute or minute and a half. So, you will have to divide up the work. So, each person will get exposure and it is up to you how you want to innovatively manage your time in front of the audience. 
So let us say it is an uh, how much 6 to 8 minute talk with at least about 1 or 2 minutes for um, well interaction right at the end okay because I am sure some interesting issues will come up. So about 6 to 8 minutes fit that within time each uh, person should get uh, uh, an occasion to talk it can be one after the other it can be a sawal jawab whatever it is right we leave that up to you. It can be a little skit or a play also <laughs> right how you uh, how you want to do it is up to you. Any other? Okay. Yeah. So four classes will. Uh, any questions? Okay. So that's essentially it. So uh, next time we meet you is now on uh, Tuesday, where you will be doing the presentations. And if you want to bounce off any ideas with us uh, before you actually uh, do the presentation on uh, a Tuesday or whenever you're scheduled for. Um, let us know. We might group them. We might not actually go in a serial order of the groups. We might group them based on <coughs> the kind of content you have and the kind of audience that we might try and set up. Right? So, do not presume that the audience will be you folks. Right? The audience might be people from outside also. So, it will be a slightly mixed audience. So, pitch it accordingly. Yeah. Yes. The holy holiday. Until when are they on holiday? Okay. Fine. What group is that? What's the topic? Hole in the wall. Okay. So what we'll do is that uh, this evening we'll sit down and 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 do the scheduling based on uh, topics, and uh, uh, then you folks can kind of uh, give us uh, feedback. Right. I know that every well everybody will say give me a Thursday. In, uh, uh, on second week, right? But uh, that's not going to wash with us, right? Okay, we'll take a call on that, right? We'll take a call on that. Anything else? Any questions? Okay, thanks for bravely coming to class today, right? So now you have enough uh, time to kind of think over what you will be doing in your uh, presentations and we are available now also if you want to uh, talk to us about uh, any plans that you might have and anything else that you want to do um, uh, in your presentation, right? I am sure there might be some questions, we will take them offline now, yeah? Thank you. <coughs>